For years, women's activists have warned against using the phrase rule of thumb because of its shameful origins in wife abuse. Well, here is the story according to the leading law school textbook on domestic violence law. Quote, the rule of thumb of English common law permitted a man to beat his wife with a rod or switch as long as its circumference was no greater than the girth of the base of the man's right thumb. These laws established a tradition which was perpetuated in English common law and in most of Europe. Well, the phrase did not originate in any law about wife abuse, nor has anyone ever been able to locate any such law. It is now regarded, re, largely regarded as a myth even by most feminist professors. I mean, just Google the term rule of thumb, urban legend, and start reading. Now, anybody who takes the trouble to look at the, the Oxford English Dictionary would realize that the phrase rule of thumb did not originate in wife abuse. It seems to be that it came into use sometime in the 17th century. According to one folklorist, the real explanation derives from woodworkers who knew their trade so well that they didn't have to use rulers. Instead, they could measure things, for example, by the length of their thumbs. Well, even if the phrase rule of thumb is entirely innocent, what about that law that a man could beat his wife with a switch no thicker than his thumb? Did such a law ever exist? Was it deeply embedded in the English common law tradition in American law? No, yeah. no. Yeah. The answer is no. <laughs> the myth about this phantom law has been around for a long time. There was the occasional 19th century British and American jurist who mentioned the phantom law, but it has never been found. And believe me, people have tried. What they came up with is an 18th century judge named Francis Buller and allegedly he deployed some version of this husband and stick law in his courtroom. Well, he never did refer to the law in any official ruling. He mentioned it in an off-record remark. He was then mercilessly pilloried in the London press and caricatured in cartoons as Judge Thumb. The legal legend was born, and in the hands of contemporary feminist researchers, a possible but never proved offhand remark by an 18th century judge becomes a foundational principle in the study of law. Reality check, the so-called rule of thumb does not occur anywhere in English common law, yet the myth of the rule of thumb lives on. It has been repeated by journalists, scholars, even politicians. In 2012, the State Department warned against the ruling because he said the phrase rule of thumb, it, it has these historical origins that could be offensive to some people. You would be a woman hater because it refers to an antiquated law that... Now, some might think that the mistake over the rule of thumb in feminist textbooks is an isolated mistake. It's not. The problem with a lot of research on women is not so much that the authors make mistakes. We all make mistakes. The problem is that the mistakes are impervious to criticism. Now, I had an exchange with the author of Domestic Violence Law, Nancy Lemon, at Berkeley. I wrote to her before the third edition went into print and pointed out several errors, including the rule of thumb myth. Well, she was not pleased with my note. She dismissed my corrections, and the book went into its third printing with all the mistakes still there. Too many women's studies researchers are passionately committed to the view that American women are oppressed and under siege. At the same time, any critic who attempts to correct the false assumptions is dismissed as an anti-feminist crank. Well, as a philosophy professor of 20 years and as someone who respects truth and reason, the factual feminist finds it altogether unacceptable for students to be using textbooks with myths posing as scholarship. So I'm going to continue to follow the work of academic feminists, to criticize it when it's wrong, to learn from it when it's right. <laughs> if you've learned anything from this video, please like it. And if you've heard any other feminist myth that uh, has given you pause, let me know. Let me know in the comments section, and I will investigate. Then please subscribe to the series, follow me on Twitter, and thank you for watching The Factual Feminist.